What's going on everybody, C4, welcome back to the channel, and today we're here for a new episode of our Retro Madden Rebuilds, where we start in Madden 12, go a full decade up to present day Madden 22, and try to build a team into a dynasty. Today it is the Rams, and as you can see, 76 overall Rams were not very good way, way back in Madden 12, but they had some very fun players, and I was like, you know what, it's time, I want to do this rebuild, more so because of this man under center, and we'll get to him in just a second. Taking a look at the Rams' offense, our starting point, Roger Saffold, known commodity in the NFL, eventually moved to guard, but he was a guy that always kind of played at, or at least around a Pro Bowl level. We have Jason Smith, who like I thought of and rem remembered him as like a really big bust, he was one of the top picks, like a top three pick, and never quite panned out, but... When I when in doubt, I go to the Madden 12 actual ratings. Like you get them online, and he was at 87 in Madden 12. So like you know what, for how bad this team is, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt here. He will start this as an 87. We have Lance Kendrick, 72 hidden dev at tight end. Mark Clayton, Greg Salas, Denario Alexander, Danny Amendola at wide receiver. Not a lot there, but like someone like Amendola, uh, 25. There's a chance for him to you know carve out his niche there just a little bit. We have one of the most underrated, underappreciated running backs in NFL history, Steven Jackson, 95 superstar. I was even debating with giving him uh, an X-Factor, but I was like, you know, superstar is fine. And if he plays a, you know, pretty good, because he's 28, he's starting to slow down just a little bit. But an absolute monster, man. Steven Jackson could do it all. And under center, we have Sam Bradford, Sammy Sleeves. And I actually didn't even give him his full rating. In Madden 12, he was an 85, but there's obviously different attributes in Madden 12 to present day Madden 22. So I just gave him everything that we could from Madden 12 and it kind of came out as an 82 overall. So we're, we're kind of short selling Sam Bradford here as he goes into his second year out of Oklahoma. And that's just one of those what ifs, you know? Obviously, you know, the biggest what if is like this should be the St. Louis Rams, not the LA Rams. But the biggest what if is like for Bradford, he was, people forget how dominant he was at Oklahoma. Like we're talking 50, 60 touchdowns at Oklahoma. And it wasn't, you know, is it inj everyone knows the injuries, and it was most likely the injuries why Sam Bradford never panned out. Maybe there's a chance that he was like a system quarterback at Oklahoma because, you know, those wi Oklahoma wide receivers wasn't like they, you know, jumped to the NFL and absolutely dominated by any means. Like, I'm trying to think like Ryan Broyles and, you know, guys like that. But still, don't get it twisted, man. Sam Bradford with, uh, oh, who's that tight end? They had a really good tight end. He played for the Bengals. Uh, either way, Sam Bradford, that is my goal. Picking the Rams here this year. Well, I'm gonna. That's gonna drive me nuts. I can't remember that tight end. Um, Sam Bradford. We're gonna try to make him a thing. We're gonna try to make him a franchise quarter. We're gonna kind of answer the question: What if Sam Bradford could stay healthy? Where would he have gone in his career with the Rams? We're gonna find that out today. Flipping to the defense. It's pre Aaron Donald, but there's still some really fun players. We have Chris Long, 82 star. We have Robert Quinn in his rookie season out of North Carolina, 78 with that star. So we have two good pass rushers, and it's setting itself up. I absolutely. We'll pull the trigger on Aaron Donald if I can. Even though it would be fun to like go through this series and bring Aaron Donald somewhere else. Also, if I can get Aaron Donald, I'm going to try to get Aaron Donald. This is the rebuild that I would give myself the luxury of maybe jumping a couple picks and pulling that trigger if it presents itself. Rest of the team, not the best. You know, the secondary, we got Eagles great. Eagles legend Bradley Fletcher and Quentin McKell, to be honest with you. McKell was actually kind of decent for the Eagles. Fletcher clearly was a meme, but this, the corners suck. Uh, we have Darian Stewart at Strong State. He's a guy that I kind of hope gets a dev trade. He was he was good, man, most notably for the Denver Broncos. But he's 23-star normal dev. He's going to get a lot of snaps. I would love for him to go up dev. And then look at the linebackers. Not much outside of James Laurinaitis, who was an absolute tackle machine out of Ohio State. Second-year player, 89 with a star dev. He's a guy I'm almost certain will bump up off that star dev to a superstar before too late. But as you can see with this team, there's some interesting you know, star players, young players that we know are probably going to be good. But there's a lot of bronze. A lot of normal, a lot of room to improve, which is, which is good because the last couple of rebuilds, to be fair, we've had a lot of key pieces already in place when we already start the damn thing. This year, we're going to have a lot more opportunity to put our fingerprints over building this Rams team into a dynasty. So without further ado, let's get into year number one. Fairly light for our year one free agents. I'm really just going to kind of target, uh, I mean, even we could go with Justin King here. I don't know who he is, but like 24, he's fast. Sure, why not for three years? See, just see if he can get a dev trade. But uh, the big, in terms of players that I think I, are going to be contributors to this rebuild long term, I got Danny Mandola locked in on a four year deal, as well as Darian Stewart. Actually, a little expensive for a 74 normal, 22 mil over four years, but I think he's going to be primed for a dev trade. Plus, he's one of the more well known players on this team. So, year on wasn't the best, I mean, as expected, but like our team overall, you know, that's green. 
all all greens offense defense overall we had a couple yellows when we started this rebuild look at that we had the top five rushing offense defensively though just not good enough eight nine last place in an nfc west that was pretty competitive eight nine is usually good enough some years to be like the second best team in your division uh take a look at the stacks wow steven jackson second in a rushing 1600 yards 20 touchdowns on the defensive side i see james laurinitis with six picks 14 pbus and he's also in tacklers good dad he, that's what we needed man that sounds like dev uh bradford wasn't hot that's not bad just uh you know hopefully this is like the beginning like this is he's got to get better every single year because you could definitely build off this 40 200 yards 25 touchdowns only 10 picks 16 and 20 for steven jackson average almost 100 yards a game what a monster on the receiving front, 75 catches, 1,000 yards, 7 touchdowns for Danny Amendola. 8-4 and four for Lance Kedrick. 7-5 and five for Greg Salas. Steven Jackson, 500 yards out the backfield. Defensively, look at that year. At a lower nice, 139 tackles, 3 TFLs, 6 picks. We had 11 and a half sacks, Chris Long. 8 from Robert Quinn on 14 TFLs. Those are pretty good numbers from literally our only two pass rushers that have had any sort of like NFL career. Uh, picks outside of Laurinaitis, I mean... You know, we re-signed Darian Stewart. He had a pick on 91 tackles. We re-signed Justin King. He had 100 tackles, which might be good for Dev Trait because uh, I believe Devs for DBs are tied to total tackles. But uh, no interceptions there. On the yearly awards, just a quick look here. MVP went to... Oh! What? <laughs> All right, maybe the most unexpected MVP win I've seen. But we will take that. He's also Offensive Player of the Year. He's running back of the year. So, and we asked that Jason Brown is actually kind of a piece of shit. If he's the Jason Brown, I think. Like, didn't he, like, beat up his girlfriend at the Pro Bowl? Uh, which is obviously, you know. I, I Because I'm not 100% sure, that's why I haven't released him. Because, you know, stuff like that. Come on, dude. But let's focus on Steven Jackson. What an absolute animal. MVP. Steven Jackson. Get him so I think, you know, he said, should I give him X Factor? Or is he going to earn his X Factor? I think he earned his X Factor this year. You know, he's at 29. The regression's about to hit. But what a monster, man. S. Jax. Let's go. As far as dev traits are concerned, on the offensive side of the ball, Steven Jackson has gone up to an X factor, which makes a whole lot of sense. He's the MVP. Lance Kendricks had hidden dev. It comes out star. Thought Amendola might have had a chance at a star, but just obviously not enough production through the passing game. Defensively, Chris Long went from star up to a superstar. And James Laurinaitis went from star up to a superstar. Very good start for our key players here in this rebuild. We have a lot of money to spend this free agent period, and it's just garbage, man. I need corners, I need linebackers, and all the guys are like 75 veteran normal devs. So we are going to try to spend bigger on Deshaun Jackson. And as always, it's going to be full transparency on Deshaun, even though we are the leading bid. I don't know if we're going to get him. Uh, his speed is glitched because he had 100 speed in the starting rosters, and when you import it into franchise mode, it goes down to 77. So you got to assume what his rating is going to be when you make that speed 99. So that's kind of why we're paying top-tier dollar for Mr. Deshaun Jackson. Hopefully you get him because we desperately need someone that can, you know, take the top off a of defense. Deshaun Jackson is impossible to sign. I've This is two rebuilds that I've paid like $10 million more, been the top team, and he just goes, nah. It's something with the 100 speed glitch. I know it. That's the only reason why he's not picking my teams, right? Because we inherited current day Rams draft selection, aka F them picks, uh, our two picks, because I, I need to make our two picks. I'm going to pick in the second round and in the third round. So we have no first rounder. There's obviously some pretty good players here. Um, but we need like a linebacker. And there's linebackers we've just recently used, unfortunately. Bobby Wagner is here. We have Levante David. But we also have Demario Davis. Demario Davis might not be like S tier like Levante and Bobby Wagner. But he's going to be like A tier for sure. So let's grab a very fun player. And of course he doesn't have a dev trade. I, I thought he would have superstar. All right, great start. All right, into the third round here. We're going to at least try and get, like, one good player. We got a Keem Hicks at D-Tackle. We desperately need... Oh, my God, look at those key ratings. Well, at least he has a hidden dev trait. Let's go. All right, first look at our draft recap. Oh, my God. Davis, normal dev, and he's not even, like, a high rating. Damn it. Uh, Keem Hicks, 71, hidden dev. We got, oddly enough, Ryan Broyles bust but he was one of the uh, top targets there for sam bradford at oklahoma legatron hidden dev nice legatron actually wasn't he the ram he was the rams i don't know if he was drafted by the rams but i know he was his prime was just i assume he was drafted by the rams i'll take that kicker in the sixth round 
Trevor Wade, 62. Ruben Randall, 59. But, uh, man, I'm really disappointed on Demary Davis. But we got two in devs, one in Akeem Hicks, and one in Legatron. Our free agent for year two is one man, James Laurinaitis, getting him locked down on a five-year, almost 69. Nice. Million-dollar deal. And at the end of year two, no other way to cut it, man. Our, like, offensively, we're good. Top 10 offense, both passing and rushing. So, I mean, Steven Jackson, that means Sam Bradford, all played pretty well. But we're bottom dwellers in the division. 6'11", kind of sucks. Look at the big picture. Uh, also, outside of James Laurinaitis being the third leading tackler, no one really had like an individually you know crazy year. Look at Bradford here. Top 10 in passing yards. Top 5 in passing touchdowns. It needs to be said he's developing very nicely. Even though we don't have a lot of team success, Bradford's going up every 3-4 weeks up to an 87 star at 25. So still very much uh, in the mold anyways of a franchise quarterback. 1,500 yards, 17 touchdowns for Steven Jackson. Shout out to Michael Ho'o Mawa Nawui. Remember this guy? I definitely butchered that. I think he like played for the Patriots. He was our fullback. He had six touchdowns. Receiving 1,300 yards, 11 touchdowns on 87 catches for Amendola. Almost 9 and 11 for Greg Salas. 8 and 5, Lance Kendricks. Ryan Broyles. 600 yards, three touchdowns. Not bad for a guy that started out as like a 58 overall, up to a 65 with boost. 480 and 3 there for Steven Jackson. As a receiver, 149 tackles, five TFLs for James Laurinaitis. 11 half sacks, Chris Long. 10 and a half for Bob Quinn. We got 30 tackles, four sacks, eight TFLs for Akeem Hicks. Four picks, Justin King. And Hicks was hidden dev. He comes out as star. I thought there might have been a chance there for a superstar. But still, again, generally, we got a lot of work to do for this team. An awesome roll of dev trades. Danny Amendola goes from normal to star. Sam Bradford goes from star to superstar. And on the defensive side of the ball, we have Clayton Keaton. I actually think he used to play for the Eagles. He just because he played a lot, went from normal to uh, star. Demario Davis went from normal to star, getting rightfully the dev trade he should have got. I'll take that's a win. That's a win for a 6-11 season. For free agency, I wish we didn't just recently sign Navarro Bowman or else I would be all in. And again, it's not going to be a, a series where I don't want to just repeat players, but not we're like this is four or five rebuilds in. I don't want to be used to Bowman the second time. He's going to be a popular free agency, but we are going to spend some money aggressively here. Looking at getting Joe Halley, 2476 scheme fit at guard. Guy that definitely sees like a ceiling of like 81, 82, which is good. Alteron Werner, 24 start of corner. And I'm looking at Morgan Burnett here at strong safety. I'll actually probably kick him to free safety, 24 years old with a star dev. All right, the bad news is that we're not getting all the big targets, even though we're paying top tier money, which is something that we might have to fix throughout the, the staff points and spending that in the skill tree to attract free agents. But we did get Morgan Burnett and Joe Halley. So combine that with hopefully a good draft and we'll be more competitive next season and not bottom dwellers in the NFC West. Not going to lie, loaded up this 2013 draft thinking we're going to go hard. We're going to have a top six pick. And yet again, we still don't have a first round selection phenomenal job Rams there's legitimately so many needs uh, like right outside linebacker we need D tackle two corner two and three free safety one you could absolutely argue we need a wide receiver two with upside oh boy so I'm gonna make our first two selections so I'm gonna make our second and third round pick and I'm not gonna lie I'm not I'm not saying I'm gonna cheese but if there's an opportunity to cheese if there's clearly a baller selection. Ah, oh, it's Bobby Trees. We just got him in the last rebuild. Oh, gee. Of course, we don't need a tight end right now. Um, all right, we got Fredericks would be dope. At least talking about guys that are like into the second round here. Not much at pass rush. Luckily, we're good. What about D-tackle? Hankins, Benny Logan. Not bad. Linebacking core, Kiko Alonso. We could I could rock with Kiko. He might he might be pulling a good rating. Jamie Collins as well. Into the second it, man, there's just nothing. Not one of these outside of just going and getting Kelsey, which we don't need, honestly. Kendricks. Lance Kendricks is his name, right? He's star dev. Um all right, I'm gonna get I we're gonna go Kiko Alonso. He pulls the dev trait and we're gonna move him. He's gonna be our starting right outside linebacker. All right, this ain't too, too bad, and it's, you know, we're not, there's a couple cheese picks. I'm not even going to show you that attempt them, but uh, we got Deron Harmon. I need a safety. He's He's been pretty solid. Had a great career with the Patriots so far, so it's normal dev, but I'm expecting, you know, you know high 60s type rating. Should be a serviceable starter with a great opportunity and playing time to earn a dev trade scenario. And take a look at our draft recap. Our haul from 2013. We got Kiko Alonso, 68 
Hidden Dev, third round, we got Duran Harmon, 68. Normal Dev, fourth round, we got Chris Thompson, great receiving back. And he has Hidden Dev, so that's a good compliment to be able to come in and work off of Steven Jackson to, you know, Jackson is ultimate power back. Uh, after that, we got Levine, Toy Lolo, 59. Avery Jones, 63. John Boyette, Spencer Ware. Yeesh. But, I mean, two hidden devs. And this is going to be the last year we don't have a first-round pick. So, you know, hopefully things turn out better for us with first-round picks. And maybe free agency isn't straight garbage for another year. The second, third straight year it would be. So a very quick recap of our team as we gear for year three, a.k.a. our Madden 14 season. Sam Bradford is now a superstar. Danny Amendola is a star. We have Chris Thompson as a receiving back. Joe Alley at guard. Those are the changes on offense. On defense, safety room went over a little overhauling. We got Morgan Burnett in free agency. We brought in Harmon to be our third safety in nickel, so he's going to get plenty of playing time. Kiko Alonso is probably the bell of the ball from the draft. New hidden dev starting outside linebacker. Demario Davis went from normal up to a star dev. Hopefully, he continues his development. But as you can see, man, there's only so much you can do with bad free agency and no draft picks. We still have plenty of holes. This is like our first phrasing, first of all, phrasing on that one. But this is really like our first true rebuild. Like, it's going to take us probably like at least another two seasons. Unfortunately, we're going to be wasting a lot of the prime of Steven Jackson to get this roster where it needs to be to be a true contender. But maybe we can surprise people here in year three. As far as free agents are concerned, pretty top-heavy. We have a lot of uh, upcoming ones, but only a couple guys are clearly need to resign. So I'm getting Steven Jackson on a four-year deal. Not too worried about the regression there. Saffold's amazing. I actually got a six-year contract extension with him. Chris Long on four. I'd rather not four, but he's still... Out of respect, I'm a huge fan of Chris Long. And he's still an incredibly good player. 88 superstar, 28. He, still, he might have another year that he won't regress. So that's, that's not too, too shabby. And the rest, I mean, again, we have so much money. I mean, some of that is going to have to go to Sam Bradford, but give me three, four, five really good free agents, and we're going to get in on at least two to three of them, minimum. At the end of year three, kind of dog shit, to be honest with you. Our worst record to date, five and 12 going backwards, even though we had a top five rushing offense, top 10 passing defense, oddly enough. That's kind of weird. Uh, looking at the big picture, looking for some of our guys. Sejim James, the Lord Knight, says a leading tackler. That's pretty cool. Should most likely go up to an X-Factor. Sam Bradford was not good for an 89 superstar quarterback. I mean, we're not doing enough. He doesn't have enough weapons around him. Fine. Agreeable. That's still not good considering he's had the same weapons the last two years and has been putting up, he had, what, 30-plus 30 30 touchies last year. Uh, huge year to Steven Jackson. 1,600 yards, 16 touchdowns. we got six vultures there by Chris Thompson. For whatever reason, man, he was developing. I was like, he's superstar. Felt like every week he was getting one development point. Uh, but he's only a star. He's up to a 70, though. So it's, again, great compliment to Steven Jackson for the next four years. No 1,000-yard receiver. Amendola was our leader with 900 yards, six touchdowns. Defensively, Lord Otis led the NFL with 143 tackles. Had four TFLs. 11 sacks of Keem Hicks. Six for Chris Long. Four and a half for Bob Quinn. Not great. Interceptions, not great. <sighs> Come on, Yef. Yeah, Fisher, get it going. Mike Vick wins the MVP and quickly just seeing if there's any Rams, which there should, there's no reason to have any Rams. There's not. Let's, okay, I got to double check. We're going to go in this line. Do I have a first round pick now? I keep assuming that I'm just, I'm like, my first round picks are going to come back. It's only a matter of time, right? How far in the future are the Rams in real life shot themselves in the foot? We have, there, we have the number four overall pick. All right, I'm lit 100%. We're going with the cheesiest pick we can make in that first round. Looking at the first grouping of players here, I'm seeing I'm seeing Khalil Mack. We don't even need a pass rusher though. I'm seeing you know we're gonna go Mike Evans, Odell. So I might go Odell just because Odell went with the Rams right now. You know that pays me to take Odell over Mike Evans, but you know, we're gonna we're gonna go and we're gonna make sure we get a baller here. All right, the bad news is no one on offense went up Dev Trait. The Half bad, confusing, but we'll take a news. For some reason, Laurinaitis did not go up dev for leading the league in tackles. But Kiko went from star to superstar. Demario Davis went from star to superstar. And Akeem Hicks went from star to superstar. I'll take it. All right, we were looking for big name free agents. We got a couple. I'm going for it. Even though we've just used Vontae Davis in the Dolphins rebuild, that is way too good for how bad our corner is to at least not try and be aggressive. Uh, Jason Kelsey at center. Why not? And I got this Will Rackley. Star dev, he's 24. Scheme fit at left guard would be a big time upgrade. Give me two of the three. 
I got, no one wants to come to LA. We got Rackley fine. Like, you know, we got a start dev starter on the O-line. But, like, I overpaid for both Vontae Davis and I definitely overpaid for Jason Kelsey. What? They, just, they hate Jeff Fisher. They hate Jeff Fisher. Odell Beckham. Mike Evans. <laughs> With the third overall pick, the LA Rams are selecting Aaron Donald, D-Tackle, Pitt. wonder if he's going to be good. And we're into the second round here, and our team's down so bad. That uh, I'm, I'm gonna I'm not gonna stress the rules. There's no real rules. It's just keep it the way you want to. And if you make it too easy, it's not gonna be as fun. So we need a wide receiver. Clearly, there's a one A one. I won't go one. We have Allen Robinson. We have Jarvis Landry. I think all things considered, because he's now actually a member of the Rams. We're gonna go Allen Robinson here in the second round. Need we just need to get a wide receiver. I couldn't couldn't just say, oh, let's try to salvage Calvin Benjamin. Maybe if we had first round picks at any point during this rebuild. But now we just need to start accumulating talent. Draft recap time. So Aaron Don. Oh my God. What is that? What? 64 for Allen Robinson? That can't be right. Uh Aaron Donald's a freak. 79. I can only assume that's gonna be X Factor right out of the gate. We got Braden Leonard, 66 hidden dev. Normal. Would have thought he would have. A hidden dev. We got Ross Cockrell, 64. Avery Williamson, 66. Does he have hidden dev? He might. Nope. Okay, normal dev. We got some good names, guys that I know, but Logan Thomas, converted tight end, but at quarterback, he'll be our QB, two. And we got Luke Bowanko, 62. So, I mean, no no misses. No, like, we've had a couple sub-60 overall picks, but it's draft class. We got AD back in L.A., and hopefully Allen Robinson has superstar and develops really, really quickly. It might have been a little longer than expected, but in year four, Darian Stewart, a guy who we're calling for year one, depends to go off dev trade, finally gets the dev trade increase. Another fairly light free agency period. So we got Jason Smith. I give him a five-year deal. You know me. I run my lineman into the ground. I want him till he's, you know, he's going to be good till he retires at that point. Uh, you know what? We got Bag of Bones Jones. We'll take that one-year deal. Why not? Super Bowl winning punter with the Philadelphia Eagles. We got Lance Kendricks on a four-year deal. Justin King on a two-year deal. And again, just waiting for some big free agents to say yes and accept our money. This upcoming free agent, because we got the money to spend. They just don't want to come. And all it took was us for the draft. Aaron Donald, and we make our playoff debut. It took us four years. But finally, the formerly St. Louis, now LA Rams, 10-7, and seven, not only make the playoffs, get our first divisional title of the rebuild. Look at the stats. I mean, at this point, I don't even care. We, you know, we make the playoffs. We get a ticket to the dance. We're one and done, so be it. It's baby steps. 3,800 yards, 31 touchdowns, Sam Bradford. 17 and 20 for Steven Jackson. Ageless wonder. No 1,000 yard receiver. Let's see a little bit more than Allen Robinson. But again, you're going to the starting point for A Rob. You know, 64 overall or something like that. It's going to be a little bit of a slow burn. Uh, James Laurinaitis, 131 tackles, four interceptions, 13 TFLs, 25 TFLs, 14 sacks for Aaron Donald. That's disgusting. Uh, nice years from Chris Long and. Mr. Bob Quinn, uh, four picks, James Leonidas. Okay. Uh, this draft, I'll tell you right now, this draft, if there's a baller corner, I think I'm going to be aggressively looking for a game changer in the secondary. Well, we tried to. We had Vontae Davis last year. just wouldn't come. Steve Jackson, number four in the MVP race. Looking at the rest of the award winners. Aaron Donald is defensive rookie of the year. Surprising absolutely no one. Steven Jackson is running back of the year. So things are finally starting to turn it around. Thank God this is a 10-year rebuild, not a five-year rebuild. Because I still think we got a little bit of ways to go. We got the Detroit Lions. That is a winnable matchup, even though they have Megatron and Matt Stafford. We have Aaron Donald. And we get the dub 20 to 17. Next up, he's the 11 and 6 Atlanta Falcons. How fitting would it be? As soon as we have Aaron Donald, we just go on an absolute run. Look at those ranks. Top 10 offense, top 7 defense in terms of points per game. The balance is there. And I think I think even though we lost, we got our first playoff victory at 1 and 1 in the playoffs. Both matchups, I mean, this one here, 2017, was a bad game from both quarterbacks. I'll, I'll be honest, it was Steven Jackson. Thank God for Steven Jackson. Second game, did we at least see a little bit better play from our franchise quarterback? No, but I mean, Matt Ryan also wasn't much better, to be honest with you. But definitely, you wanted to see Sam Bradford have like a three or four touchdown type game. No interceptions, but there was progress this year. We can build on that for the upcoming year five. But... First up is the offseason. Again, we have $89 million in salary cap. We can spend it. The free agents are there. And we need to have a big draft. 
just getting a little look here at our at our boy AD. As you can see by the icon next to his overall, he straight up came out. Came out the womb. The draft womb. A superstar X Factor. Let's take a look at our dev traits. And then I'm actually going to bed and I'll finish recording this on Friday. While I'm here, just because I'm recording this on Thursday, it's my daughter's first birthday. That's why there's no video on Thursday, but this will be coming on Friday. So in terms of offense, no dev traits. Allen Robinson is also a star dev, so it's not exactly what we were looking for on that roll of the dice. AD is X-Factor. Kiko Alonso up to an X-Factor as well for our dev trade increases. Another year, another pretty terrible free agency class. Not a whole lot screaming that that's what we should get. I feel like there's actually a lot of guys that were getting one-year deals because it feels like 90% the same class. But we have Randall Cobb here at wide receiver. That would represent a great get for our offense. He's 25 start at 87 and would instantly become our top wide receiver. So we're coming in with a pretty big, big, not ridiculous, but big enough that he should absolutely be choosing our offer. Unbelievable. I just had to check out of curiosity. We have like all of the attract free agent things unlocked as well in our skill tree. It doesn't make sense how we're missing on every big free agency target that we want. Man, nothing like needing a corner and at tw it goes 25 picks for like probably the highest rated corner and he goes right before our selection in Ronald Darby. And even that, you know, that tells the strength of the corners in this class. You know, maybe if we can get into the next round you're looking at like Steven Nelson, Quadre Diggs way down. There. Ah, it's still, we need corner help badly. I might just have to, I might just have to go after Eric Rowe and hope that he might have a dev trade. Like, there's no safeties I could even convert to corner. It's like overwhelmingly our need. You know, we could maybe look on the offensive line to a degree, but I, I think that's where we need to go. Wide receiver is not much better. This is not a particularly strong draft class. Be picking at pick 26. You know, maybe we get, you know, once we get in the next round, it might be a little better. So I think we just got to hope maybe Eric Rowe is a dev. Come on. If not, you know what? It just counts as us not going. You know, it won't be a cheesy draft. You like having a few of those in every single rebuild. Screw it. We need a starting center. It's best player available. And it's Shaq Mason. Pretty, yeah, I was pretty confident he would have a hidden dev. Might not be the sexiest position, but... At this point, it's not worth just getting guys like Eric Rowe. We see a position that's less value. Like, we need wide receiver. We still desperately need corner. There's nothing there. Center was our third need. But the best player available is at center. You got to go center. So, take a look at our draft recap. First round, we got Eric Rowe. 69 overall. It's not brutal. It's also knowing that he's an old dev. He got a lot of work ahead of him. Second round, we got Shaq Mason. 65 hidden dev. Going to be plug and play as our starting center. Computer, after that... Uh, I mean, okay, we got Jameson Crowder, hidden dev, beautiful, 63 hidden, again, again much kind of like uh, Allen Robinson last year, got the dev trait, but the base rating is fairly low, we got Doriel Green Beckham, doesn't have a picture, and he didn't go to Oklahoma, but, you know, sometimes you just make those picks, we got Ty Smith, don't know who that is, Bryce Petty, and Nick Boyle, wow, Nick Boyle's actually pretty bad, He's one of the best blocking tight ends in the NFL, so, a couple 50s, but we got two hidden dev players here in Shaq Mason and Jameson Crowder, both at positions of need. Hopefully Eric Rowe can do something and offer us something at corner because we desperately need a corner. So as we go for year five, here's how our team looks after making the playoffs for the first time last year. We want to build upon that offensively. No big changes outside of the fact we got Jameson Crowder and somehow we got Willie Sneed. Must have just signed him. CPU signed him. They threw us a bone there a little bit. But... Jameson Crowder on offense, Shaq Mason will now be our new starting center. Everything else is our familiar faces because no one wants to come to us in free agency. Defensively, our corners are really my only worry. And again, I'll tell you right now, King would have been our highest rated corner on free agency, like the free agency market. It was disgusting. I think 78 star was the best guy and he was 32. But everything else is good. Our front seven is S tier. Really surprised Robert Quinn hasn't had a dev trade scenario yet, but he still, you know, performs and plays really well. And obviously Aaron Donald has transformed this defense. Our two safeties, Darian Stewart and Burnett, are solid. Hopefully take some of the pressure off our corners. But all again, man, I definitely see this team being a double-digit win team and a playoff contender here in year five. Well, the good news about not signing any big free agents is that we have the ability to do this in our in-season window. We're able to sign Sam Bradford to a five-year 177 mil. I got Robert Quinn on a six-year 90 mil. Keem Hicks on a five-year deal. 
Danny Amendola is the only guy I think that we might just have to let walk. I already know we're probably going to get burned. He's going to be the top wide receiver free agent. But three years, 29, he's already regressed, I think, a point or two. It's the writing's on the wall for Amendola. But I'm going to get Demario Davis. We got him on a five year. I got Greg the Leg on a five year. And we still have like $60 million salary cap. So, hey, you know, we're due to get a free agent, okay? We're due to at some point in this rebuild. So we go from divisional champs last year to six, and we're just way too inconsistent. So here's what we're going to do, man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change the schemes up just a little bit. Seems like our defense has been kind of solid, but I tried because we have the Jeff Fisher coaching tree. Offensively, you go Denver because of Mike Munchak. Defensively, I just went with Philly because Jim Schwartz was his last DC. But we're just not, we're struggling here a little bit. So I'm going to, I'm going to go with the next logical thing. All right. No one's going to complain about that. We're just going to go with the base Rams. Zone run West Coast. I don't know where we're even going to fit. We are absolutely not a fit. You know what? But we probably keep with the scheme here. The best scheme, which is, I mean, we don't even have a good scheme to be honest. We were all over the place. Vertical power runs what we were rocking with. Uh, and that was just almost more so because of Steven Jackson. But let's just see, because it's all about playbooks. Maybe the Rams playbook gives us a little bit better opportunity to put some points on the board and get a rhythm going here in the upcoming season. Uh, so 6 and 11, just not good. Sam Bradford, $100 million quarterback, 28th, you know, average year. Steven Jackson was very good, just does not slow down, which is awesome. 11 and 7 for Amendola, 8 and 4 Jameson Crowder, 8 and 10 for Allen Robinson. Defensively, 122 tackles from Kiko Alonso, Aaron Donald doing Aaron Donald things. 82 tackles, 24 TFLs, 18 sacks, 9.5 Keem Hicks. Really want to see, you know, Chris Long and Robert Quinn get after it a little bit more. But maybe when Aaron, you know, because Aaron Donald's eating so much. There's only so many sacks that can go around. Darian Stewart leading the team with two interceptions. I mean, even our offense, at least it was a top 12 offense. Maybe we're going to switch up. I, I don't know, man. I'm trying. Aaron Donald is defensive player of the year. That is awesome. He's also D lineman of the year. So congrats to you as we try to figure out how the hell do we fix this team? Like, let me look at our rankings again. Do I even bother? Like, should I? St the off the rushing offense is good, but the passing yards. Do we? Maybe we just need wide receivers. Maybe that's that's what we're missing. I, I don't know. But I feel like I got to do something. So we'll go to the Rams playbook. If that doesn't work, we can go back to the Denver Broncos playbook. But maybe no playbooks are gonna work until we bring some talent to wide up. All right, a little bit better for free agency. What we're going to do first is Stefan Gilmore. I'm coming $30 million more than the fair offer. There was most other offers were obviously higher than the fair offer as well. But if we, again, it's just like if we don't get him, we're just doomed. And then I'm going to go for Deshaun Jackson because while he is 29 and he's 86, that rating is going to go up once we can correct his speed. So if we can land him, it's going to be, you know, 29, you know, 89, 90 overall wide receiver. All right, we didn't get to Sean Jackson, but we did get Stephon Gilmore. I'll take that every day of the week because now our, sh our priority can shift 100% to hopefully getting the best wide receiver in the 2016 draft. So in the draft, we had a top 10 pick. Pick seven. Of course, all the good guys are gone. Jalen Ramsey, Joey Bosa, you know, those guys are off the board. So look at the corners that we could draft that I, you know, realistically... At seven, you know, we wouldn't be looking at Xavier and Howard, but I could go as far as William Jackson if we wanted to go that route. But the wide receivers that are available, you know, you guys got Will Fuller. Will Fuller's probably going to be pulling in a pretty good ring. We have Sterling Shepard 100% scouted. Um, you know what? We want Deshaun Jackson. You miss on Deshaun Jackson, you can get someone like Will Fuller who fits that mold. Wow, only 93 speed. A little bit low. I thought he'd be 95 plus. Still a hidden dev wide receiver. So next up, I do want to try to grab the best corner available. We're looking at this group of second round projected corners. Kenzie Alexander's a good slot. Don't really need a slot. So I think we're just going to grab James Bradbury. Should have a chance to be in the highest rated of the group. And he is hidden dev. All right, look at our draft hall. After Fuller and Bradbury, we got Jordan Jenkins, 71 normal. We have Alex Lewis pulling in a... I'll nerf him down a little bit. There's probably some, let's see, there's some, some stat that's ridiculous. Yeah, the pass block power, pass block finesse, run block power. For a guy that I don't even, I think he was like a rotational lineman for the Ravens. So we'll uh, appropriately nerf that rating just a little bit for sure. Probably shave off 10 to be generous. Again, Antonio Morrison of Florida. He was actually, before injuries, he was a really good prospect for the Gators. Uh, 69 and a 64. But we'll take the top two players at positions of need with hidden devs. So year six, looking at our free agents, we got Kiko Alonso on a four-year deal, Joe Hiley on a two-year, we got Darian Stewart on a three-year, 
Chris Thompson on a four-year. And we also got Lack Edwards as like a UDFA signing. We had no punter on our roster. And we got him on a super affordable five-year, like $2 million deal. All right, so year six, we got ourselves a, another divisional title, our second divisional title. We're back on board here. So maybe the switch to the Rams offensive playbook is, uh, you know, maybe we overthought it about trying to keep the Jeff Fisher coaching tree. Should have been with the Rams all along, potentially. Uh, looking at the big picture here, looking for our guys. Justin King is on our team. He got six picks. Of course, he's set to be free agent. Luckily, interceptions don't relate to dev trade, so that's fine. Uh, we'll just act like those are Stephon Gilmore getting those picks. Sam Bradford, 4,000 yards, 33 touchdowns. That's a good year. Strong season. 1,300 yards, 11 touchdowns for Steven Jackson. Six touchdowns there for Chris Thompson. 11 and 7 for Will Fuller. 9 and 10 for Jameson Crowder. 800 yards for Allen Robinson. 6 and 7 for Lance Kendricks. Pretty good production for Steven Jackson out the backfield. 132 tackles by Kiko Alonso. Leads the team. 16 sacks, Aaron Donald. 12 from Chris Long. 10 from Robert Quinn. Six and a half. A key mix. We got six picks. Justin King, four for Stephon Gilmore, four from Laurinaitis, two from Demario Davis. Very happy with all of these numbers. Um, MVP went to Matt Ryan. Aaron Donald is defensive player of the year. That's all he does. Will Fuller, offensive rookie of the year. Dope. Cool seeing that. Aaron Donald, D lineman of the year because it's just what he does. Justin King, DB. Of course, contract year. Decided not to re-sign him. He's going to go off like that. All right, so we have a playoff berth in the wildcard round against 10-7, 99 overall. Unstoppable juggernaut freak of nature, 43 passing touchdown, Cam Newton. But we have Aaron Donald, and it didn't matter. Even though things are trending very much in like the best direction they have this whole rebuild, uh, Cam Newton is absolutely a cheat code at this point. Yeah, I mean, hey, Sammy Sleeves went toe-to-toe. -to -toe. There's just only so much you can try to do to stop and contain Cam Newton. One and done. To so close out a good year, nothing on offense as far as dev trades outside of the fact that we just found out Will Fuller is a star dev. Defensively, our linebackers are all X-Factors, which is good. Not ridiculous at all. James Bradbury is a star dev. We'll bump him up the depth chart there a little bit. And... Uh, King didn't go up any dev, so DB of the year, core at most interceptions, still on normal dev. So at least we don't have to re-sign him. Little pet peeve needs to be said. Can we get it to like this fifth year option thing is not just broken? It's like Aaron Donald, fifth year, he did no value to this team. Absolutely no value. Can we just can we just fix that, please? Seems like an easy one. Alright. This has not been a rebuild that we've gone uh Always the cheesy pick, but the fact we got Trey White 100% scouted in the first round, got it. It's a sign. It's an absolute sign. Also, I, I decided to pass up in free agency. Honey Badger was there. Our salary cap's getting a little thin, so we're going to grab Trey White and uh, have no more worries. Trey White, James Bradbury, Stephon Gilmore. That is our secondary. That is a damn good secondary to build around. Second round just went for the best athlete at Strong Safety, Darian Stewart. I think he's probably the next kind of you know, okay starter that's going to start to regress. I thought Melifon with the free combine might pull a, you know, better than normal dev, but still a great base. Insane athlete. All right, so looking at our draft, we got Trey White, 80, hidden dev. Melifon was 76 overall normal. And the computer hooked up was Deshaun Hall, 70 normal. We got Zach Banner, who's 75 again, like the last year. I don't know. There must be something wrong with these draft classes a little bit. We will properly nerf Zach Banner, even though Steelers fans love him. We'll probably shave a little off that run block power, pass block power. Uh, but they did hook us up with Aaron Jones. Okay. You know, Steven Jackson's getting old. I uh, That's nice. Elijah Qualls, Ben Bolware. But that, okay. I mean, the computer hasn't really been, you know, cooking us up big time with pick. I think so far the best one before this was probably Jamison Crowder. But Aaron Jones, that could be a big get depending on what the dev trade is. But very happy with our first two picks. Especially Melifon was rating. That's surprising. All right, so going into year seven, here's how our squad looks offensively. You know, I, I think we're, we're building a nice trio here of wide receivers to pair along with Sam Bradford. Steven Jackson, the regression is real, but he's still an absolute monster. Uh, Aaron Jones is superstar. Got a lot of work this preseason somehow. Unveiled his dev trait. Um, I don't know how that happens, man. Some guys' dev traits always is here after we send a week one. Is there a way to get 450... 
snaps in before you oh i know what it is i know what it is man because i was like there's no way you play that many we have the uh, skill tree thing where you can unveil a uh, dev trait once per season that must be what it is um why would you pick that over trey white let me see what trey Wright's working with right away um but offensively you feel good defensively feel very happy with where this defensive unit is at i think again we're going to be top dogs in the division and going on a playoff run this year again aggressive keeping our own free agency when it's so unpredictable in free agency this is kind of the route we have to go so we got Laura Nitus, morgan burnett steven jackson we pretty much even though we have aaron jones superstar ready to take over uh, out of due respect to steven jackson winning mvp in year one of this rebuild uh, he's gonna be here till he retires uh chris long he's he's regressed fine so i got i have no problem giving him a two-year deal we got four years for alan robinson and uh, we have a you know about 30 40 million dollars a cap to hit this offseason too all right the yo-yoing of our rams team continues nine and eight which is only a loss worse than what we had last year but no playoffs seahawks actually ran away with it but the numbers offensive points per game is pretty bad every other number is okay you know not you know i would definitely say playoff caliber uh big picture here not seeing much for any of our team. I don't know. Maybe we need to do a change of the guard and go with freaking Aaron Jones. Uh, not a great year out of Sam Bradford. Kind of average. 12-7 and seven there from Steven Jackson. 1,007 Will Fuller. 1,014 Jameson Crowder. 1,006 for Allen Robinson. Let's go. These guys are firing on all cylinders. Defensively, Kiko Alonso led the team 128 tackles. We had 13 sacks, Keem Hicks. So Aaron Donald just had his randomly like RNG role. He's not going to play well this year. So it's... That kind of sucks, the wind out of the, the sails here of this rebuild. What's the dev on Trey White? X-Factor? Star? Star? Here I was being like, all right, fellas, I'm going to, this next draft, this 2018 draft, I'm going to, we're not going to cheese. We're going to pick, like, maybe the top guy at a position they need. I, I thought Trey White would be, like, X-Factor, maybe. A star dev, maybe. I got to rethink that. That's not that overpowered of a pick. Just had a high base rating. Uh, quick look at the early awards. MVP went to Ryan Matthews, Eagles legend. Looking for our beloved Rams. Nothing there. All right, just a brutal season all around. All right, we're starting to see a little regression out of our tight end. Really, it comes down to two spots here. Hayden Hurst at tight end, or we have Josh Rosen at quarterback. Just because I'm trying to think, like, if this was actually the Rams. Would you have questions about Bradford? He has so much money guaranteed. And I also feel like there's another opportunity for, like, a rebuild where Rosen, we have a chance to kind of revive him over the last four or five years of a rebuild. That won't be the case here. So I'm just going to go highest tight end available. And he is normal to have Hayden Hurst. Nice. And same thing. I, I mean, there's no real holes on our team. So we're going for oldest player that's regressing. Get a backup. And that's going to be at middle linebacker behind James Laurinaitis. So we're going to grab Josie Jewell. Would love a hidden dev. No hidden dev. 12 jumping. All right, we're going to boost Josie Jewell's jumping. Clearly, there's a miscommunication there with the old stats. Uh, but, so we got Hayden Hurst, Hidden Dev. We got Mason Cole, White Lighting, Troy Apke, Braxton Berrios. You know, average draft out of that. But we got Hayden Hurst. And that was, this is like me like kind of going with like, we're not going to go with a super OP, juicy player like we did last year with Trey White. And he still ends up being pretty good. All right, so for fair, I have three agency here. Aaron Donald. Yeah. That was easy. We got Will Rackley. I'm going to let Lance Kendricks go. You can't re-sign everybody. Our salary cap the last two off-seasons. That's why we haven't been dipping in free agents. I haven't even really been looking because we've been around, you know, $20 million knowing that we had to pay Aaron Donald. So for Kendricks, we have, you know, a younger... He's going to regress. I wouldn't be surprised if he's like an 81 come this off-season. And we got Hayden Hurst, who's a 76 star as a rookie. He'll be pretty close. So it seems like we can have a little bit of a change in the guard there. Joe Halley, bring him back. Shaq Mason. Jameson Crowder went for Superstar. Superstar slot, let's go. And then we'll bring back Steven Jackson again until he retires. All right, a little bit better here in year number eight. 11 and six, we get our third NFC West championship of the rebuild. And I mean, just look at our team, man. 91 overall, this team is primed. They go on a run here, a little bit of a run. We open up against the Washington Commanders in the first round, the wild card. Hopefully not one and done. Looking at the stats here. Uh, not seeing anything for our team. That doesn't mean no one had a good season. Sam Bradford, 36 touchdowns. Okay. That's pretty good. It's better than his last couple years. We had 9 and 12 there from Aaron Jones. There's a little bit of a change in the guard there in the backfield. Uh, 1,100 yards, 6 touchdowns. Will Fuller, 1,009. Allen Robinson, 9 and 13 for Jamison Crowder. 
Defensive side, Laurinaitis once again back in the leaderboard for uh, total tackles. And Aaron Donald, yes, finally. I, like last year, no, just nine sacks of the blue. So it's just, I, yeah, I don't know if there is a little bit of RNG there. But uh, he's back to his normal self here being the best player in the goddamn league. He makes 12 and a half sacks. Seven there for Bob Quinn. Only four and a half for Long, but he'd have 20 TFLs. Three picks for Laurinaitis, Bradbury, and Gilmore. Very quick look at the... We're the 24th offense. That's... Kind of weird. Ray Rice is your MVP. Wow. All right. Nothing for the Rams. We need a playoff win to hang our hat on this season. In the first round, it is the Commanders. Should be, I'm not going to say a winnable game, but it is actually a winnable game. 24-20. We'll get a look here. Just to see. Let it, let it simmer. Not a great... We beat Andrew Locke, and he's always crushing it. Two touchdowns, two picks there for Brad... Uh, you know, Bradford, not the best. They're the team that finally got Deshaun Jackson off free agency. But, oh, uh, there we go. There we go. That's how you... How did you win? Oh, we got... 10 sacks. That's how we won this game. We also need to give a, a little shout-out here to Morgan Burnett. One interception. This is a defense. The defense won us this game, which is fine. It's not always going to be the case. But then again, we have a D line that has Robert Quinn, who's like 95 overall, Aaron Donald, Keem Hicks. You got to expect some, some level of elite play. Sometimes they will win you a game. Next up, we have the Eagles in the division round, and we actually handle business fairly well. 35 to 17. We get the dub, and we go to the NFC Championship game. Of course, against the one seed, the Chicago Bears. We'll see what the Bears are kind of looking like at this point. Bradford, though, good performance, man. Three touchdowns, one pick. That's, just, that's all I need to see, man. 35 points. That was the offense. But what is going on with the Bears? Perfect. Perfect. They got Jay Cutler, Matt Forte, Stephon Diggs, Evan Ingram, a couple of their homegrown guys. Ziggy Ansah, Miles Garrett. Okay, there we go. We got Miles Garrett. This is going to be very much Miles Garrett and Jay Cutler. Going up against Sam Bradford and Aaron Donald. Super Bowl on the line. Come on. Can we make our first Super Bowl appearance of the rebuild with three years to go, including this year? And we lose by a field goal. Oh, 24-21. Your Rams falter, and it is a Bears-Ravens Super Bowl. I mean... We got no. But this way, from how, how many sacks we had in our first win to having zero sacks against the Bears, that's probably the decider right there. Just to quickly burn through and uh, show you guys, it was just like you know, I'm not just skipping over free. There's literally no upgrades. Like you got got with the top players at positions of need are like 70 and 80. You're lucky, and we don't need anything on the offensive line. Uh, we get to save our money and make sure we can retain our own players. Okay, so looking at our roster, where we need to go for the draft. Steven Jackson retired. Oh, my God. I wish I could see that. Wish I could go back in time and see what his final stats were. But we'll never forget that. He Madden 12, year one MVP. He was he was a Hall of Famer. Going to Hall of Fame. Uh, but in terms of our offense, I mean, we look pretty good. Defensively, you know, we're deep. We're deep in a lot of spots here. I, I think genuinely we just go... BPA, maybe pass rusher because Chris Long's starting to regress. So we'll take a look at the pass rusher there. Debo Samuel just went off the board of the Pittsburgh Steelers. So what do we got for pass rush? We have LJ Collier. On the other side, we have, ooh. Okay. We'll grab Montez Sweat. Should have a hidden dev. And he's an S-tier athlete. Right, look at our draft recap here. We got Montez Sweat in the first round. Michael Dieter in the second round. Justin Lane, 69. Corner in the third. Christian Miller, Kingsley Kiki, Jimmy Moore, Slim Jimmy. Love seeing that in the sixth round. Alex Wesley in the seventh round. But it's very much a one-man draft class with Montez Sweat coming in. For our last free agency period, we got both of our tackles coming back on short-term deals. Saffold and Jason Smith, both have been here since day one. Uh, we got to move on from a couple people. I, I want to leave it so we have enough money to sign one guy, maybe a game-changer. So Darian Stewart and unfortunately Chris Long. Let's just act like Chris Long's going to retire because he's been here since the beginning. Uh, we don't need him anymore, though, with Montez Sweat. We will bring back James Bradbury on a two-year deal. All right, we'll take it. 10-7, and seven, second place in the division. Well, at least we make the playoffs, and right away we get to figure out who the best team is in the NFC West. Take a look at our stats here this season very quickly. Sam Bradford was 
average. Like, that's kind of been what he's been, unfortunately. I mean, that's kind of good, though, because it would be good, a little boring if every rebuild our quarterback was a, you know, MVP candidate, candidate team. My rushing offense is pitiful. What is going on? At least Will Fuller had a decent year. 1,300 yards, 8 touchdowns. Defensively, Kiko Alonso, 120 tackles. we got 19 sacks, 23 TFLs from Aaron Donald. 9.5, 17 there for Bob Quinn. Three picks, Trey White, a couple of duos. But, I mean, not 30th ranked offense. What? Rodgers is the MVP, just quickly burning through here. Oh, Aaron Donald is Defensive Player of the Year. Congrats to him. He's also D-Lineman of the Year, but that's all we have as far as awards. But, my God, one of the worst offenses in the NFL carried by... Our number one defense. That certainly helps out a little bit. In the opening round against the 49ers, battle of the 10 and 7 NFC West rivals. Fuck me. All right, let's go year 10, all or nothing. To start the offseason, we don't have a lot of salary cap. We got a little bit more. But we also have a massive hole on the offensive line now as Jason Smith has retired after 11 years. And hey, at least we career revived him for what it's worth. Shout out to career reviving linemen. Free agency, we now need a new right tackle. We're going to go all in, as you can see, with our outrageous, pretty much doubled what the fair offer is to ensure we can get Orlando Franklin for this 10th and final season. Oh, wow, we finally get one. Welcome to the squad, Orlando Franklin. Canadian, by the way. All right, we're going into this draft. Ignore the portraits. It is what it is. I'll fix it. We need a tight end two and or strong safety. I'm going to grab too much to stop the top guy projected this. We have Kyle Duggar at strong safety. That would actually be a decent pick. Or a tight end, Cole Komet, could also be a decent pick. Uh, you know what? We'll go Cole Komet. He might have a better chance at a dev trade over Duggar. And he does not. Damn it. For the second time, ignore the portraits. Our draft recap. We got Cole Komet, KJ Hamler in the second round. He's normal dev. Uh, Malik Harrison, middle linebacker, 71. Ben Birch. Not a bad draft, man. 370s. We'll take it. For the final draft. And on a strong note. Year 10, this is our final squad for this 10-year LA, St. Louis, whatever you want to call it, Rams rebuild. We got Bradford, 92 superstar, Aaron Jones, Will Fuller, Jamison Crowder, and Allen Robinson, along as Hayden Hurst as our skill position players, Orlando Franklin, Joe Halley, Shaq Mason, Will Rackley, and the lone offensive lineman that was here from the very beginning, Roger Saffold. On that, it's a very good offensive line. This offense, 90 overall. We absolutely have to make the playoffs. Defensively, front seven, Got under a little bit of transition here, a little bit. Chris Long to Montez Sweat. We got Hicks, Donald, Robert Quinn, Kiko, James Laurinaitis, and Demario Davis. Dopesy and Laurinaitis and Robert Quinn go the full rebuild. And then for the DBs, we got Morgan Burnett, Obi Malafonwu, Trey White, Stephon Gilmore, and James Bradbury. There is no rhyme or reason why this can't be an 11, 12, 13 win team and we could go to Super Bowl here in year 10 at the buzzer. At the end of year 10, a very competitive NFC West. 11-6 gets us third place, but gets us into the playoffs. We get to take on the Commanders again. I think we beat them last year to start the playoffs. Let's look at our final year of stats. Sam Bradford was... Uh, Sam Bradford. Running the ball. Big year out of Aaron Jones. 1,000 yards, 18 touchdowns. Getting a little bit of that Steven Jackson production. 1,000 yards, 6 touchdowns for Allen Robson. Only guy going over 1,000. I think our quarterback... Was hindering the play of our wide receivers. Mary Davis, I think that's his first time leading the team in tackles. 144, 9 TFLs, 25 sacks from Aaron Donald. What? You know, let's go, Ren. You're going to have a big year. Might as well have it year 10. 13 sacks from Montez Sweat, 9.5 from Hicks, 7.5 for Robert Quinn, 9 interceptions. Stephon Gilmer, I don't know what happened here with the defense for the uptick in production, but I freaking love it. And it can make us ignore our 27th ranked offense Aaron Donald is the defensive player of the year um, also gonna be D lineman of the year Stefan Gilmore is DB of the year very very quickly just because it's probably our last chance let's take a look at the career stats of these guys unfortunately we missed it on Steven Jackson because he retired kind of surprisingly and you can't really go back they gotta make that a thing make be able to be like when a guy retires from that retired menu you should be able to click and go in and look at their their career stats. But Sam Bradford in this rebuild, 42,000 passing yards, 294 touchdowns, 111 interceptions. That's okay. I mean, Steven, you know, none of our running backs have really had any substantial playing time till this year. Allen Robinson, 6,000 yards, four, uh, 42 touchdowns. We have 5K, 35 touchdowns. Will Fuller, 5,000 yards, 50 touchdowns for Jameson Crowder. Solid numbers. Defensively, James Laurinaitis over 1,000 tackles. Kiko Alonso, 10 tackles shy 
of going over a thousand for himself. Aaron Donald, 119 sacks in six seasons, <laughs> which is absolutely disgusting. Uh, 80 sacks for Robert Quinn, 76 for Akeem Hicks. Uh, 28 picks, that means Gilmore did most of that without us. But 21 picks for James Laurinaitis, 11 for Kiko Alonso, 10 for Davis. That linebacking core was very sick. Very, very, that's probably one of the, the better units that we built here into this rebuild. So without further ado, let's go in the first round of the playoffs. This is all or nothing. And in round one of the wild card against the Commanders, the Rams handle business 24 to 16. Very happy with that. And we go take on the Arizona Cardinals, who put up 45 against the 49ers. Makes me a little worried. But in this matchup, we had an okay showing. But look at the defense. Three interceptions on Andrew Luck. Andrew Luck just doesn't know how to solve our defense. Two picks, Obi Melifanu, one from Demario Davis. That'll do as we punch our ticket to the next round. As the Cardinals come to town, they're pretty good, but I mean, they're still 86 overall. Big gap. That's a big gap in team overall points, you know? Like, we should be able to. It's a low scoring game. We already know we're going to win this Super Bowl. If we can go on and win with our defense, we hold. They got 45, then they come to us. Different story. Get 10 points. And now, that was actually not a bad showing there from. Mr. Bradford, it is a matchup that we got to win. Just it, This whole playoffs, NFC side, is filled with the division. Come on, man. Come on. We can't have this. the Rams, the defending in real life Super Bowl chance, be our first 10-year retro rebuild that doesn't yield a Super Bowl victory, let alone even a Super Bowl appearance. And we make the Super Bowl a 33-29. What a game. We'll sim right ahead of the Super Bowl. It's going to be a matchup against the Bengals, which is pretty cool. Uh, history kind of repeating itself, but that's, let's get a little sniff about what that performance was as we prove that we own the division. 33-29 in a matchup. Sam Bradford got hot. 347 yards, four touchdowns, and it is now time to take on the Bengals. We're going to very, very quickly take a look at the roster here. Just see what they're dealing with, and then we're going to hop in, play the moments, and we'll uh, hopefully be able to ride this off into a Super Bowl victory to close the video out. Looking at the Bengals, they got Andy Dalton, 98. David Johnson, 98. AJ Green, 99. Marquise Lee, 90. Jermaine Gresham, that's the tight end from like year one that I could not remember. That was Sam Bradford's tight end, Jermaine Gresham. Okay, uh, looks like their whole offensive line is almost 90 plus. You go to the defense, Geno Atkins, 99. The linebacking core kind of sucks. Vernon Hargraves is a 97, Eric Reed, 96. So their defense, is not nearly as good, but their offense is immaculate. This is going to be a very difficult game, but I trust our defense in just about any situation. Let's go, man. Sam Bradford coming off a game where he was like, hey, I'm actually like an okay quarterback. We need him to do that here again. Three touchdowns, four touchdowns, somewhere in that range, and we need our defense to kind of pitch a shutout here against an excellent Cincinnati Bengal offense. This is very eerily similar to like kind of their matchup that we just saw last Super Bowl. It was like the Bengals' high-powered offense. The Rams just terrifying defense, except this Bengals team has in a way better offensive line. Low scoring first half, still a one score game. I'm, you know, we got to get the touchdown here. We tied up at 14. Looks like we got a little bit of momentum to open up the second half. Get a touchdown, get a field goal, get two field goals, but it's still a one score game. Get three field goals in a row, but you get. I think at, at, at some point during that there was a turnover, and I think this continues. Our streak of winning Super Bowls continues. Very ugly. Absolutely a defensive performance type game, but we do the damn deal. That's awesome, man. Exactly what you wanted to see. Let's get them to hoist us up. The confetti once again is blue and yellow. I should oh, I should have put them in. I don't even know what the Rams old jerseys are in this game. The St. Louis Rams jerseys, they still an option, but very happy with that. Let's see the Super Bowl MVP. Hopefully they give it to someone on the defensive side of the ball. They don't just give it to Sam Bradford with like two touchdowns, one pick. Or something. Because you know that's the kind of stat line he had. Maybe it was like, you know, Aaron Jones ran all over them. But that's, uh, that's Super Bowl victory, man. We're going to take that 4-0 in the playoffs. Kiko Alonso, nine tackles. And I think that's a pick six. Congrats, man. He's been a guy that's been here for a minute. That's cool. It's not just like they gave it to, like, they phoned it in and just gave it to some random guy. Let's get everyone up on the podium here, please. Thank you. Aaron Jones, Sam Bradford, Will Fuller. Let's get Aaron Donald. We got James Laurinaitis up there. Would be cool to see AD. But that is a successful rebuild. Another one in the bank. So what I need you guys to do for the YouTube algorithm, let me know in the comment section below. 
just be a good guy. What team you want to see next? Make sure you smash that like button if you guys are enjoying the Retro Rebuild series. If it's your first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys back here on the next one. Thanks for watching, and peace out.